everybody here. I'm here with Dr. Sachin Patel, guru, plant medicine advocate. Nobody knows breathing better than this gentleman. I'm excited to share some time with him because I have to admit going over some of his notes and things of that nature, I do partake in faulty breathing. So that begs the question, we breathe 2,300 times, 23,000 times per day. Obviously, breathing is the backbone of life. Why is it so important to breathe properly? Great question. So first of all, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. The reason we breathe and the reason it's important to breathe uh, optimally is because of a variety of factors. One, the main urge to breathe comes from removing CO2. To remove that toxic gas from our body is why we actually breathe. We also breathe to bring in oxygen so that we could fuel our mitochondria and help make energy and turn our fats, carbohydrates, and proteins and electrons into sources of energy. Wow. We also breathe to regulate our pH. So, you know, the main the main organ that regulates the pH of our blood is actually our lungs. We breathe so we can smell. Try smelling without breathing. We breathe so we can talk. Try talking without breathing. 70% of our detox takes place through our lungs. When our diaphragm moves up and down 23,000 times, each time it does that, the lungs and the diaphragm are assisting the heart in moving blood through our bodies. And with each breath we take, we're moving lymph because some of the biggest lymph nodes in our body are actually located underneath our diaphragm. We also breathe in order to change and regulate our emotions. One of the first things that changes in our body when we experience uh, any stimulant is our breath. So if we feel fear or stress, our breath changes. If we feel a sigh of relief, our breath is one of the first things to change. So our nervous system is constantly using our breath to steer the state that it wants to be in. And we also can use our breath to elicit uh, out of body, sometimes out of this world, spiritual experiences as well. So there's so many reasons uh, why breathing can play such an important role in our health and healing. Wow, there's a lot to unpack with there. It's really exciting. Use some interesting terms, sigh of relief, nervous system through breathing, 70% of our toxins are expelled through our breathing. I mean, here we are talking about detoxification programs and breathing should be a component of it. Absolutely. So, could you expand on the idea of the sigh of relief and its involvement with the nervous system? I think people would love that. Yeah, absolutely. So the way we breathe is is a two-way street. So what's really interesting is that our diaphragm, which is one of the master muscles that controls our breathing, is the only muscle in the body that never shuts off next to the heart. But the diaphragm, we can actually consciously control. And we can when we control the diaphragm, we can indirectly control our heart. So the diaphragm is really important because it's innervated heavily by the vagus nerve. And as we know, the vagus nerve is a two-way superhighway that goes from our brainstem uh, throughout all of our trunk organs. And so the diaphragm, because of its innervation uh, with the vagus nerve, can be utilized to actually change our emotional state and to change from a sympathetic or parasympathetic state. I refer to the diaphragm as the steering wheel of the nervous system. So we can literally uh, manipulate it and breathe in, a su in such a way to elicit certain emotions. And each emotion that we experience actually has a breathing signature associated to it. So think about when somebody is crying, their diaphragm has a, a certain type of breathing signature and that changes their emotions. Think about when somebody is happy and laughing there's a breathing signature and that changes the chemistry of our body. We release more endorphins and serotonin when we're laughing and we can actually uh, perform that same breathing signature, even if something isn't funny, to change how we feel. So the sigh of relief is the same way. It's a breathing signature. When we feel a sigh of relief or when the stress is behind us, what do we do? We, we just exhale without even realizing we're doing it. And it's because the unconscious, subconscious nervous system is constantly using the breath to change our chemistry. So we can actually identify these breathing signatures like a sigh of relief, exaggerate them to actually create not only that emotion, but that chemistry in our bodies. And so the way we would do this and the breathing technique that is referred to as this physiological sigh is really simple. You would take a three-stage breath in, so breathing in through the nose, tongue is, is situated at the roof of the mouth, you're gonna breathe in for about a count of six, filling up your belly, then filling up your lungs, and then just taking a few sips at the very top, 
filling up the top of your lungs, the apex of your lungs, holding for a few seconds, and then releasing with a loud audible sigh, just relaxing our muscles, letting the air all the way out, blowing that CO2 all the way out, emptying our lungs as much as we can, pausing at the bottom and repeating that five to six times. Within a couple of minutes, you're gonna feel dramatically different. So our breath is something that we can consciously utilize to change how we feel. And just like a steering wheel in our car, we can drive to most places if we've been there before unconsciously, most people can breathe unconsciously throughout the day. And while you'll get to where you want to go uh, in your car, if you're driving unconsciously and you'll still survive to uh, till tomorrow, if you breathe unconsciously, imagine if you could tap into how you want to feel. Imagine you realize that with every breath, there's a fork in the road and I can choose how I want to feel. Do I want to feel calm and relaxed and focused or do I want to feel scattered, stressed and overwhelmed? Our breath is one of the easiest, fastest, most measurable ways that we can change our the state of our autonomic nervous system. And it's beautiful because it's available to us 24-7. We just have to know exactly what to do. Fabulous takeaways. The diaphragm is the only muscle that works all the time. It just totally makes sense because if you don't breathe, you know, we expire. The interlink between the diaphragm, the phrenic nerve, and the vagus nerve. You know, once you talk about vagus nerve the balloons start popping off. Outstanding tie-in. But what's most interesting is the physiological side. My understanding of that, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this is how we train our armed services, our, our rangers, our marines, mm -hmm. our police. You know, I, I'm watching a TV program and the TV program says, control your breathing. They're doing a physiological sigh. So this really begs the question, is there a difference in breathing with both nostrils, one nostril affecting the nervous system? Really, what is going on there? Yeah, great question. So what's really interesting about our nose is that it's actually lined with erectile tissue similar to our genitals. So from a tissue standpoint, the inside of our nose and our genitals very closely re resemble one another uh, from that perspective. So these tissues can expand and contract. And throughout the day, you might notice that it's easier to breathe from one nostril versus the other. And that can uh, kind of go back and forth throughout the day, because this is one of the ways your unconscious nervous system regulates your physiologic uh, state, whether you're sympathetic or parasympathetic. So an easy way to remember this is that think of your gas pedal and your brake in your car. The gas pedal is on the right, the brake is on the left. So if I want to be a little bit more sympathetic dominant, a little bit more alert and present, then I would start breathing through my right nostril. So I'd cover up my left nostril and breathe in and out for a few minutes through my right nostril. It's like putting my foot on the gas. If I want to slow things down, shift into a more parasympathetic state, then I would cover my right nostril and breathe in and out through my left nostril. So just like I'm hitting the brakes in the car. If I want to feel balanced, then I can go back and forth between left and right for a few minutes, and that's going to bring me into a calm, balanced state. So we can literally use the nostril that we breathe through to activate different hemispheres in our brain and tell our nervous system uh, how present we want to be to whatever uh, situation we're, we're facing in the moment. So breathing, you know, if you're breathing through your left nostril, works on the right side of your brain. Breathing through your right nostril works on the other side of the brain. The balance between the two gets crosstalk in your brain, if you will, but more so also balances your sympathetic and mm -hmm. your parasympathetic nervous system. You got it. Who would have thought that breathing is making that kind of indelible mark on your health? So I got to ask a question. I am a mouth breather. If I lie in a supine position, I snore, which I'm sure brings a whole bunch of other things to the plate. What is typical in somebody who's a mouth breather versus a nose breather? Great question. So it, it's all, people often wonder if we can breathe through our mouth and our nose, why does it really matter? So our nose is actually a, a very, very intricate uh, organ. And although we just see it from the outside, we don't realize that there is actually this uh, ornate structure on the inside of our face. And when we breathe through our nose, it actually perfects the air. It cleanses the particulates because they get trapped in the cilia and our nose hairs and also in the mucous membrane. It pressurizes the air. So breathing through our nose actually allows us to get 20% more oxygen into our alveoli, which is where the oxygen exchange takes place. It also moisture regulates the air. So if the air outside is dry, 
you don't want that dry air going into your lungs because you're going to start coughing. So we also moisture regulate the air before it gets to the bottom of the lungs. We also temperature regulate the air. So you can see how the air is being perfected. Now, another thing that's interesting is that our immune system, and I know you're big on immune systems, doc, is they it actually starts in our nose. So when we breathe in these wow. 30 pounds of air that we're breathing every day, we want to make sure we're filtering that air, you know, physically filtering it and then biologically filtering it. So the inside of our nose is actually lined with a mucous membrane that under the right conditions of nutrient status and oral microbiome status, we produce something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide kills viruses, bacteria, and pathogens on contact. So anything that we're breathing in, it's going to have its first pass through this system, and most of it's going to get killed off before it goes into our lung. And as we all know, our lung also has a microbiome, or our lungs rather have a microbiome. When we breathe through our mouth, the opposite happens. We're making whatever the air, outside air quality is, we're making it worse by breathing through our mouth because our mouth is the dirtiest part of our body. So we literally disinfect and purify the air and perfect it for our lungs when we breathe through our nose as opposed to breathing through our mouth. The other thing that happens when we breathe through our mouth is that it, it, uh, it tells our nervous system that we're in a ready for a fight or flight type of state. So we're skewing more towards sympathetic dominance when our mouth is in that position. We also don't get as much oxygen. So we feel a little bit more anxiety because our CO2 concentrations start to build up. And we're also drying out the saliva, which rots the teeth, which can also impact the oral microbiome, which can impact nitric oxide production. An interesting thing that's really important too for people to note is breathing through our nose has antidiuretic effects. So if you sleep with your mouth open at night, you're much more likely to have to wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom because mouth breathing acts as a diuretic. So one of the first things my clients notice um, when we have them tape their mouth, just with a simple piece of medical tape vertically placed like this, so they can still breathe through their mouth, talk through their mouth if they need to. What they notice on the first night is they didn't have to wake up and go pee. And that in and of itself is a game changer because now they're not disrupting their sleep, they're not disrupting their partner and they're able to you know, better retain their fluids and regulate their body temperature. So your nose is such a, it's such a dichotomy and, and um, it's important for us to all recognize that this little thing right here plays a very important role in so many aspects of our health. Well, great takeaway in that your nose is your first line of defense because it's kind of attached to your digestive system, interestingly enough, but you're right. Um, I think I've heard you say before that breathing through your nose also kills viruses, bacteria, and pathogens because it is stimulating part of your immune system. Uh, another real takeaway, you know, the mouth taping, real interesting on that. So people have asked me because they've heard you talk about it. So could you be clear when you say mouth taping, you're taping vertical or you're taping horizontal? I mean, am I a mummy? I'm, mm, I mean, what, what's the status of my mouth when you suggest to tape it? Great question. So the purpose of mouth taping is not to hermetically seal your mouth. The purpose of mouth taping is to keep your mouth in a closed position so that your tongue sits in the correct position as well. When our mouth is closed, our tongue will sit in the roof of our mouth, activating our parasympathetic nervous system. The other thing that happens is that when we uh, put that put that tape on, it allows our jaw to relax. So people are much less likely to grind their teeth at night uh, because their tongue is positioned correctly, which makes it difficult to grind your teeth, but also uh, because you're stimulating the the, uh, the vagus nerve when your tongue is at the roof of your mouth, you're also able to get deeper sleep and relax. And you're getting more oxygen-rich blood uh, and pressurized, uh, oxygen-rich uh, uh, air and pressurized air when you're breathing in through your nose. Now, a couple of things to take into consideration for people who are nighttime mouth breathers is that you may start with putting the tape on vertically just like this, I use something called 3M Micropore Tape. You can buy it on Amazon. A roll of 12 is like $10. It'll last you your whole family a year if you have four people in your house. And so it's a very, very inexpensive insurance policy to ensure that the 8,000 or so breaths that I'm going to take while I'm sleeping uh, are through my nose. I'm going to wake up more refreshed. I'm not going to have to wake up to use a restroom or at least as often. I'm going to start dreaming again. This is some of the things our clients report. And many people don't think that they're morning people until they start mouth taping at night and realize that it's because they had dysfunctional nighttime breathing. That's why they weren't a morning person, had nothing to do with the mornings. It was had more to do with the way they were breathing. What other techniques or um, devices would you recommend to gauge your quality of breathing? 
Yeah. So there's a few tools that I recommend uh, to my clients. One of them is an aura ring. And an aura ring is a great sleep tracker. One of the things that it also does is it measures your HRV, your resting heart rate, and your respiratory rate. So using that information, uh, you can you can test, you can experiment with yourself. Hey, what happens when I tape at night versus when I don't tape at night? Another test that I like is a nitric oxide test. I did this with my son. He was a little resistant at the age of 10 to mouth tape at night. And so we did an experiment and I said, let's test your nitric oxide levels and see uh, how they end up being in the morning. And then we can decide if you want a mouth tape or not. And lo and behold, when he was mouth breathing uh, without the tape on at night, his nitric oxide levels came back low. The next day we taped him, tested him again, and we could see that his strip turned a bright pink color, which means that he was sufficient. So it was clear to him, even as a 10 year old, the benefits of mouth taping. So it, that could be a really easy way for people to test. And then the other thing I like is uh, there's two other devices I like. One is called an OXA band. And an mm -hmm. OXA band is something that you wear around your rib cage, just below your rib cage on uh, covering your diaphragm. And it actually is a breathing coach. It's a belt that has sensors in it that measure your HRV and your heart rate and your calmness state and your respiratory rate. And it can actually coach you through different breathing techniques to alter your physiological state. And the other device I like is called a moonbird. A moonbird is a tiny little device that you hold in your hand. It's like holding a bird in your hand. And with different breathing techniques, it expands and contracts at different rates so that it could guide your breathing. So if you're sitting on a Zoom call, you could have it in your hand, no one would know, and you could be breathing in a way that helps you stay more focused and relaxed. If you're watching a movie or if you're reading a book or you know uh, whatever it is you're doing, you can have that bird in your hand and it'll help you regulate uh, the rate of your breath to then help you regulate your nervous system. So those are, those are a few things that I like uh, and have been beneficial in our client journeys. So the device is that's outstanding, but you've mentioned NL2 twice. And I think we've really got to take this baby and put it to bed in nitric oxide, you know, testing for the strips, great idea in any kind of practitioner's office. But, you know, um, I've, again, I've heard you say that if you breathe through your nose, NO2 goes up dramatically, whereas if you breathe through your mouth, NO2 goes down. There's a lot of associated uh, health benefits to an increase in NO2, um, libido, testosterone levels, uh, cardiovascular health. I mean, here we are taking, you know, NO supplements all the time. I'd love to pass the baton and let you run with that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So nitric oxide is a molecule that was just recently discovered and the people who discovered it won a Nobel Prize because uh, it is a prized molecule in our body. It's something that we make. And interesting fun fact is that when they developed Viagra, Viagra recirculates nitric oxide in your body. Yep. It was originally developed as a blood pressure medication because nitric oxide dilates our blood vessels, increases microcirculation, so great for brain health and great for um, you know reproductive organ health because we need that microcirculation to deliver nutrients to those body parts. And one of the things that they found is the side effect was that men ended up having these, you know, uh, prolonged erections because they would just start making so much nitric oxide. Nitric oxide uh, prescriptions were also given and Viagra prescriptions were also given during COVID because it's such a powerful protective agent for the immune system. Mm. So it has profound benefits. Now we can increase our nitric oxide production by sixfold simply mm. by breathing through our nose and we could increase it 15 fold by breathing through our nose and humming as we exhale. So if you're in the car, if you're in the shower, you're, you know, you're somewhere where you can hum, then that's going to increase your nitric oxide levels as well. Um, humming also relaxes our nervous system because anything that prolongs the exhale, lengthens the exhale, uh, stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system. So just a, a few things to talk about when it comes to nitric oxide. And uh, as we age, particularly after the age of 40, men's and women's nitric oxide levels crash. So I'll do presentations and I'll bring a whole bunch of nitric oxide strips with me. And out of a room of about 50 people, only like three or four will have normal nitric oxide levels. Everyone else is completely tanked. And uh, with supplementation and lifestyle changes, eating things like beets and arugula, and uh, making sure you're getting appropriate amino acids like arginine, you're going to be able to naturally increase your nitric oxide, but don't sabotage it by mouth breathing. Make sure you're nasal breathing as much as you can throughout the day and, and night. This is clearly so important. I mean, it, it's without question critical 
How did you come about this journey? What was it in your life or your client's life that rang that bell for you to follow up and now this essentially being your calling? I mean, you are without question the forerunner. We, we were talking before and I said, I couldn't find that much information on breathing without searching you, which is great. I mean, I've got the source every, and you're sharing it with everybody. We appreciate that. But how did you get on this journey? Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, I never thought if you told me five years ago, I'd be talking about breathing and traveling all over the world to uh, to facilitate breath work. I would, I would have thought you were crazy. So we never just never know where life takes us. However, what I can say is that my entire life, I've been searching for what I refer to as the zenith of both simplicity and sophistication. And I think breathing is that. It is a very simple thing that we all do, whether we like it or not. It is completely scalable. No matter where you are in the world, you've got your nose and your mouth and your lungs, and hopefully they're in pretty good working condition and a diaphragm and so on. So it can instantly change the world. I mean, that's what I'm always looking for is what's the fastest way to change the world. And I can't think of a faster way than getting more sunlight and of course, you know, teaching people how to breathe and stay hydrated. So it really falls into the category of what are some simple things that people can do. Now, one of the things that took me down this rabbit hole is actually being one, being a clinician, two, being a father and three, being a husband. So this impacted me from virtually every single direction that I could imagine. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I experienced Wim Hof breathing. Then I experienced something called elemental breathing. And then I went through sky breathing training. So I've gone through a variety of different trainings. Uh, one of the things I also did was I read James Nestor's book, Breath. And one of the things that James talks about is how our breathing actually changes our facial structure. And right around that time, was, my son was going through some uh, dental appointments where they wanted to pull some of his teeth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I know you and I believe in the philosophy that God don't make no junk. And so we started you know, digging a little bit and I read James's book and it turns out that because my son was a mouth breather, his tongue was sitting in the bottom of his mouth instead of the roof of his mouth. And because of that, his upper palate didn't expand. And so that leads to overcrowding of the teeth. And so every dentist we went to wanted to pull his teeth. And then we finally found an airway focused dentist who said, no, we want to fix the palate. We don't want to pull the teeth because that's treating the symptoms, not the cause. Right. And so the way we breathe affects our facial anatomy. It affects the structure of our airways, which then as, as adults affects our mood, it affects our emotions, it affects our relationships. I mean, so many things are impacted by uh, how we breathe. So for my son, we were able to spare him having any teeth pulled. He's got a beautiful smile and he's got a nice open patent airway, which is, which is one of the great benefits of uh, learning this material. The other benefit was to my wife. My wife would struggle with chronic low-grade anxiety, and she did a great job managing it with supplements and you know, exercises and yoga and meditation and mindfulness, but it was always there. It was always something that would just keep kind of poking its head. And then we realized that she was a habitual mouth breather, and we also realized that uh, she, as a child, she sucked her thumb, and that pushed her airway upwards, creating a smaller airway. And she had a tongue tie, which made it difficult for her to put her tongue in the roof of her mouth. In the roof of her mouth, we have tremendous number of nerve endings that when pressed upon, it instantly soothes us. Think of a child who's mm. sucking on a mother's breast, right? That nipple hits the back of the front two teeth. Think of a child who's using a pacifier. They're instantly soothed when the pacifier hits that magic button. And then think of a child that's sucking their thumb. That's the magic button that they're pushing that instantly soothes them. When our tongue can't get into that position because we're tongue-tied, then people can't push that magic button. And that was the case for her. So she had a tongue tie, which is just a little piece of extra uh, connective tissue underneath your tongue. She had that snipped with a laser, 30 second procedure. And doc, you, you should have seen it. Her cervical lordosis went from military neck to normal curvature within seconds. So all that tension was completely released. Our tongue, interestingly enough, is kind of, um, our tongue is connected to our, all the way down to the tip of our toes through our fascia. So it's not uncommon for people to have issues in their lower extremities related to a tongue tie. And they would never know it because we would never think to look all the way up in the, in the mouth to see how it's affecting structures lower down. So it's really valuable. Uh, as I started connecting all of these dots, it's been super valuable to me and my family 
And then I started like looking for pra other practitioners that were sharing this kind of information and connecting the dots with the lymphatic system, with the respiratory system, with the myofascial system, with facial structure. And I'm like, you know what, this, there's nobody else doing this. And I'm like, is this supposed to be me? And so then I just started sharing and people started valuing the information. And uh, I think I help explain things and share things in a way that makes it easy for people to understand. And I am by no means the world's expert on breathing. There's people that know a lot more than I do. However, what I do feel I do well is explain it in a way that's easier for people to understand and implement. Without question, the way you explain it, I agree. You elucidated in such a manner that it's so tangible and implementable and it's a lot of fun and, you know, some great points. I mean, again, from people that are on our side of the fence, there's always something in our life or our family's life that spurs us on to the next journey, the new chapter in our life. In addition, you made a real salient point. The body's all interconnected. And you, you did that with the fascial system because the fascia is the wetsuit of the body. Um, you, we've talking, you've really spoke a lot about the position of the tongue. So it's, I think you've referred to the idea of oral posture. Mm -hmm. Could you clear that up and tell everybody exactly how to get the position of your tongue appropriate? Yeah. So imagine that you're sitting there and your jaw is in a nice and relaxed position and just gently place your tongue at the roof of your mouth and pretend like you're going to say the letter N. That should put your tongue in that position. So jaw nice and, uh, nice and relaxed tongue sitting at the roof of your mouth, the tip of your tongue should be just behind your front two teeth. And then the rest of your tongue should be gently laid across the roof of your mouth. Now, some people might have a hard time doing that because they may be tongue tied or they just may not be used to that positioning. Yeah. So it might take time for people to get used to it. Some people may have a tie that needs to be snipped, but when we place our tongue in that position, it stimulates our vagus nerve. So think of it this way. I like the juxtaposition things. So if you were running away from a lion, how would you be breathing? You'd be breathing with your tongue hanging out of your mouth, in and out through your mouth as fast as you can. And that makes perfect sense because the, we're not just getting more oxygen, we're not just get we're not just focused on getting oxygen into the body. We're focused on assisting the heart in moving blood. Right? So when we breathe in and out really quickly, it's actually not increasing oxygenation, we're actually decreasing oxygenation. Right. We're increasing CO2, which increases oxygen that's being dumped at the tissue level. But what we're also doing is we're rapidly expanding the lungs and rapidly contracting the diaphragm. So essentially, we're squeezing and pumping that heart so that it can pump blood to the uh, distal organs, or I'm sorry, the distal um, limbs, right, to your, to your hands and your feet so that you could run away or fight off whatever is chasing you. So we, if we think of the opposite of that situation right? Because opposites simply are great ways to um, juxtaposition things. The opposite of a lion chasing you would be mouth closed, tongue mm. at the roof of your mouth instead of hanging out of your mouth. Your breath would be in and out through your nose, and it would be slow and controlled because we, and you would probably lengthen the exhale because we're trying to get the body into a relaxed state. Mm -hmm. Every time we breathe in, we squeeze the heart, right? The lungs squeeze the heart. And every time we breathe out, the lungs relax, and that allows the heart to relax as well. Outstanding. Give me six benefits of nose breathing. I know we talked a lot, but you know those people, we're in the uh, world of give it to me quick, give me the takeaway, 30 seconds or less, give me the six benefits that you would say. I pick six, sure. not five. I pr I'm pressing you. I apologize. Okay. So there's six reasons that we should breathe through our nose. One is that it cleanses the air of particulates. Two, it pressurizes the air to deliver more oxygen to our lungs. Three, it moisture regulates the air. Four, it temperature regulates the air. Five, it increases nitric oxide by sixfold. And six, it's the beginning of our immune system. So when we're breathing through our nose, we're actually cleansing and disinfecting the air so that we preserve a healthy lung microbiome. How long will it take to change somebody from a mouth breather to a nose breather following your steps? Well, that process of changing from being a mouth breather to a nose breather can be instantaneous. It just means bringing awareness. So many of us have the capability of breathing through our nose. However, we may not be 
because we tend to forget or it's unconscious to us. Now, if somebody has a hard time breathing through their nose because they have swelling, allergies, you know, histamine reactions, inflammation, deviated septum, what I want them to know is that your nose is one of those organs, just like many of them. If you don't use it, you lose it. So as you start breathing more and more through your nose, you will find that your nose starts to open up and it starts to decongest itself. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that it depends on where your baseline is, where your starting point is, but over time, it will get better for everybody. You can also uh, expedite that process by using certain uh, sprays. I use drops in my nose every night called Nasya oil, mm -hmm. and it's a special Ayurvedic formula. You can use it at night before you go to bed, and you can use it in the morning when you wake up. And so that purifies, cleanses, and lubricates the sinuses. And we can also use something called a Navage. A Navage is a uh, motorized, powered uh, neti pot type of device, which goes in and kind of rinses out the sinuses as well. So those are things that can be uh, useful and beneficial at opening up that nasal passage. When it comes to mouth taping, we encourage people to start slow uh, if they are habitual mouth breathers. So they can start by taping vertically during the day for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, try taking a nap with the tape on and then work themselves up to sleeping with the tape on at night. For some people, the tape might fall off. You just got to keep doing it. So practice makes perfect. And over time, you'll find that that system, that nasal passage starts to open up and it'll be much easier for people to breathe through their noses over time. Outstanding. Well, it would I'd be amiss if I didn't discuss the topic, the insightful topic of longevity. So you and I were talking before and I said that every time I talk about longevity, I have a list of things, you know, longevity hacks. And I put breath work on the list of longevity hacks. Where do you feel it falls on that list? Yeah. So according to the Framingham study, lung capacity was the number one predictor of lifespan. So great, great to know that a way to increase lung capacity is using an incentive spirometer. You can get them for like 20 bucks on Amazon and work on increasing that capacity. Another thing that's interesting is if you study animals in nature, the ones that breathe the most live the shortest. So for example, a uh, uh, a uh, turtle breathes about three breaths a minute, lives you know about two hundred years. A dog breathes about thirty five breaths a minute, ages seven times faster. A mouse breathes even faster than that, just lives a few weeks. And a human being takes about you know fifteen to twenty breaths a minute. We only really need to take about six breaths a minute. So if we can significantly reduce the number of breaths we take, we start increasing our energy levels, we start increasing oxygenation, especially to the brain, and we have a more calm, centered, and balanced nervous system. When we slow down our breath, we slow down uh, our heart rate, and everything, it's, it's really interesting. I was listening to this uh, um, podcast the other day, and it says that we are all born with the same number of breaths. So if you look at the lifespan of an elephant versus the lifespan of a mouse, an elephant and a mouse take the same number of breaths, but because one breathes so much faster, it ages so much faster as well. Mm. Uh, so lung capacity is very important. And then uh, respiratory rate is also really important um, metrics in looking at and improving and optimizing for longevity. Look to the future. Mm -hmm. You have put it on the map. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Sachin Patel has put nose breathing and proper breathing on the map in the plant based functional medicine world, period, end of discussion. What's the future hold for that conversation? Yeah, you know, thanks for asking. I, I think the, the future of breath work is uh, very much something that I would love everyone to be aware of. The sooner we can start, especially young children breathing correctly, the sooner we can end, you know, attention deficit disorders. About a third of ADD is actually caused by dysfunctional breathing. We can reduce the amount of medications that people need. We can put people into their best states. We can give them predictable control over their physiology. We can help improve people's facial structures. We can help improve their dental health. We can help improve their immune health. I mean, so many things get better when we simply learn how to breathe better. And it doesn't take more than an hour to teach somebody how to breathe. So it's, it's not a very complicated process. So one of my missions is to share this information far and wide. I've created a whole bunch of free guides teaching people how to breathe in different scenarios and situations, free keynotes and you know presentations that help people kind of connect the dots and help them understand where breathing fits into their holistic uh, you know approach to, towards their health. 
And I find that this day and age, especially, it's the simple things that are overlooked. It's the really, you know, maybe even some might call it boring and mundane things that are often overlooked. But breathing is really fascinating because it can be slow, subtle, and let's call it boring for a moment, or it could be very exciting and truly transformational from an emotional and spiritual level. So one thing we we didn't really talk about is, is how we can use breath to create, um, you know, um, altered states of consciousness, which allow us to heal our trauma. You know, our, our, our lungs store our grief and our diaphragm stores our trauma. So it's not uncommon uh, for those things to, to kind of boil to the surface as we take people through guided breathwork sessions. So that's another profound way it can help heal our nervous system because if we're carrying around this trauma, it's like carrying around all this weight and that keeps our nervous system hypervigilant. And uh, it's been amazing to see the transformations that you know practitioners and, and clients have gone through by simply going through a guided breathwork session to alleviate some of that emotional baggage that they're carrying around with them. Yeah, I think we're just scratching the surface. You just brought up a topic that we could spend two hours on, but um, I heard you say something before we leave. One third of people with autism have a problem with their breathing. Uh, so ADD, so attention deficit disorders, okay. uh, about 30% of them are associated to dysfunctional breathing. So it's simple. Pay attention to higher child breeds at night. Watch them when they're watching TV, when they're reading a book, when they're just uh, sitting around doing their homework, pay attention to how they're breathing and bring it to their awareness and their attention. And just remind them that putting that tongue in the roof of their mouth is going to help them reduce the number of cavities. So mouth breathing is the number one source of cavities. It's going to reduce their allergies, adenoiditis, tonsillitis. Those things are often associated to mouth breathing. And it's also going to help them have a nice open airway and proper facial structure. So our facial structure changes simply by placing our tongue in the right place. Our, our tongue and our lips act like braces. Mm -hmm. So when our tongue is correctly positioned, it opens up our palate, opens up our face, opens up our nasal passages, creates a nice arc for our teeth to develop and grow into. And our, and our tongue, I'm sorry, our, our lips sit across the front, creating uh, the front of our braces, if you will. So we naturally anatomically have the appropriate structures in place to have nice, beautiful, straight teeth. Uh, one thing we we should also mention is, without getting too far off topic, is is to mention that the, our facial structure is also determined by how much we chew. And so a lot of times these days, people aren't chewing enough, and that creates a small jaw. And that small jaw creates a small airway, which then creates dysfunctional breathing as well. So if you could get your kids to chew hard things like carrots and apples and, you know, vegetables of that nature, instead of pureeing everything for them, that's also going to help them breathe better as adults as well. Outstanding. Look, I know you're super busy. I really appreciate all that you do. I appreciate all that you share. This has been great. Part two is without question. Thank you, Sachin, for taking time and trying to get me to breathe a little bit better and calm down. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. It's been an absolute honor and I uh, appreciate you for sharing this information with your audience. Everybody, Dr. Sachin Patel, Rob Silverman, Proven Health Alternatives, always yours in health.